would be enough. Yes. Okay. So a human body from basically the top of the neck through the pelvis, okay, is hollow. Okay, it's hollow. It's like a balloon. It is a balloon. Okay? Push on your stomach, you'll feel it push out. Okay? So there's this inner pressure that pushes us, pushes us out. And we are like this from the top of the neck. Here's the head. And then on the bottom, we're not tensebral. We just got two springs there. And they bend and they spring and they bend and they spring. And people lose, lose that spring and uh, have a whole bunch of trouble in their extremities. Okay? What we're going to talk about is how that thing responds when it's damaged and how we can help it, okay? And to do that, we need to understand that inside there is a nervous system, okay? So we're not just a bunch of bones. We have a nervous system that when we get pushed on, we don't just do this, we do this and we compensate, okay? And it's there to do really one thing and that is to create balance at every single level, okay? You know, if you think about it, I had this thought a couple of years ago, and you know, everybody thinks the heart is cool, and this is cool, and that's cool, you're, you know, and so forth. But if you think about it, every single thing is there to support the nervous system, what? which is we're supposed to be having an experience, which is what we do, and that's our senses, and we're supposed to have an experience, and the nervous system is the thing that supports that. And the thing that supports that oh, is that everything else. Awesome. So the work that we do as chiropractors and working with the nervous system is bigger than anything else because that is the prime directive of universal intelligence is our experience, okay? That's a big concept, okay? The problem with the human structure is it gets damaged, okay? Innate intelligence doesn't get damaged, but what it does is the nervous system, innate intelligence, that's the same thing Okay, is always trying to restore this balance in homeostasis. And that's the conversation that we're going to have today is where is the person presenting with structural damage, with functional damage, with gravitational stress, and where is that trouble so we can start having a conversation about it globally. Okay, and it begins by looking at this thing as structurally and functionally. If you look at those x-rays as a chiropractor, all of you will see something different. Some people will see the pelvis is this way and the bend this way and the neck this way. If I showed you a lateral, you'd go, oh, look at that degeneration and that kind of stuff. But that's not our business. That's, that's, that's somebody else's business. You, you want to know that so that you can look at somebody and see the stress that they're in, see that the damage that they've done, okay, so that you can know the trouble that they're in. But none of that information is chiropractic. None of that information helps you do our prime directive, which is change that at a global level, okay? And what happens is, is for a very brief moment, we are structurally sound, okay? And the law of the universe, the law of the chiropractor, is structure dictates function. It's the law of the lamp. You puncture a hole in a tire, it doesn't function properly. If you damage the structure of the body, it doesn't function properly. It's so simple. You know, what we look at every single day is the caving in of the whole human body. And everybody, including us, sees the trouble that it is ensuing. Oh, look at that atlas. Oh, look at that knee. Oh, look at that pelvic joint. Oh, look at L5. Okay. That shifts. That shifts. That, that shifts. I can't share those with you, okay. but... It and is the human body, guys, I'm going to ask you to put your mute on. Heather, please put your mute on. Thank you. All right, perfect. Okay, so we have trauma. And most of our trauma start sideways. It's a weak link that way, if you look at it. TFLs are weak. We have big stuff going forward and backward, big muscles hams and glutes and quads and core and back muscles and it's really weak this way and the human gets knocked off to me in some sort of lateral trauma 
And guess what happens? So the weight shifts on it. That's why we have the differential, the weight differential. Okay. That's what Dr. Gregory started with the NUCA group. And then what happens is what? Body compensates. And how does it compensate? There's a law. Okay. There's a law. It's called the writing reflex, right? Now, the writing reflex is putting eyes on the horizon. So when the body goes off, the eyes shift, okay? And the day that I realized that, I realized that this area up here is compensatory. And the head is the highest compensation so that the body can move and create balance. And we have this amazing three-dimensional cup where the head sits in so that if the body goes off, the last thing is this big thing. It's like a gyro that modulates, and the head is able to move. Okay? And I've worked up here exclusively, and when I realize that that is a compensatory area, and that, that does not mean that it doesn't need to be taken care of, I asked the question. And that question was, and, and it's because I'm a mechanical engineer. I have a degree in mechanical engineering. And, and I said, big things move little things. And I realized that I needed to have my forces from up here go all the way down into my pelvis and move my pelvis. And then I saw, because I had a anatometer at the time, which is uh, the original kind of posture IQ, is um, I saw that a pelvis was posterior. But I had an anterior atlas. And I said, big things move little things. So my first question was, how do I take the direction of that atlas that's coming in anterior and move the big structural problem down the below because this thing is compensating? And, that, this, and, to, and today and tomorrow is really the, uh, the culmination of that conversation, okay? But it begins with understanding that there's basically four things that have it. There's structural damage, there's compensation, and then there is gravitational stress because of, there's gravity and the human beings start breaking down. That's what happens. We see it in everybody. We have a rule in the office. Grandma never gets taller. And the second rule is grandma never goes and stands back like this. You never saw grandma taller. You never saw grandma standing back like this. Everybody breaks down into a fetal position and rolls in. We lose our curves, we lose our stability, and we break down and we start seeing that stress in our office at multiple levels as the human being is breaking down. Okay? So, where are the postural muscles? Okay, what moves posture? Okay. What moves posture? Where, what, what of the fascia and the bones move the posture? When I move my head, does that move my posture? No. When I move my neck, does it move my posture? No. But what does is the shoulders to the feet move my posture. If I move my shoulders, if I move my spine, if I move my pelvis, if I move my legs, they all move my posture, okay? So I want to be a postural pro, okay? One day I will grow up to do that. So I realized that I have to move the posture. And that posture stuff that I gotta move is primarily from the shoulders downward, okay? And then you can clean up the stuff up top in the compensation second. Fair enough? All right, so when I look at a picture, every person that I look at, it has a story. And it has a story about the damage it's had, compensation that I'm seeing, how gravity is affecting it, I can measure that, the energy of it. How is it? Is it strong or is it weak? Is this person carrying a 20 pound suitcase and bouncing and like a deer running through or are they dragging it along? Okay, you will be able to, to understand that conversation soon. Okay, but they all have a story and they come in exactly where they are in that story at that present moment. And that's what you get to evaluate right there. Three-dimensionally, a live human being, okay? Not measuring, you know, I used to measure leg checks, not measuring a foot balance. That's a nice thing, okay? 
doesn't tell me how to fix that thing. <laughs> okay. Does not help me with that at all. All right. So here's the deal. If you have printed this, we're going to go through and I want you to write stuff down. It's a great way to learn stuff. Okay. So um, there is a neurofascial physiology. And I gave you the answer of where the writing ref reflex restores posture and vertical. So what are the postural muscles? And they are the legs, the pelvis, the spine, and the shoulders. Write it down. The secondary, meaning, okay, what, what happens if we get knocked off and it's damaged or there's weakness over time and the shoulders can't come up and bring somebody up on center like this. Nice easy curve right up on center, shoulder comes up, no stress in the neck and the head. Notice, no stress in the neck and the head because the spine takes everything nice and easy, which is what it should do. So we should drop off and come over. We should drop off and come over. What happens if that doesn't happen? Okay, why doesn't it happen? Because of more damage or weakness. So instead of this, one day this thing goes boop, 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 and it's over here now. Because these muscles on this side can't pull this thing up and restore it. Weakness or damage? Does the head just leave itself there? No, it turns, okay? You see the stress now? Big head and shoulder, and the short little neck. It's not made to do that. So they are secondary backups. So if the shoulder can't do it, guess what happens? The neck brings the head up. Writing reflex, eyes on the horizon. Guess what happens if the neck fails then? The head's got to do it. What happens if that fails? And they're over here. Okay, so you're going to learn that, and you just learned something. So what don't restore posture? Neck and head. But they do restore writing reflex, hopefully. Okay, any questions? Okay. Hey, can you repeat the first one? The yes, first. I can. Thank you. Legs, legs, legs move me. Pelvis moves me. Legs, pelvis, spine, shoulders. Structural objects. How does the structures, how do those bones move? They need two things, so to speak. Simple terms. They need a nervous system and they need what? Anyone? They need muscles. They need fascia, right? Yeah. Okay. Boom. Okay, so guess what happens? Is that person just jumping along? Okay. Are they, are they, I always get ahead of myself. It's great. I love it. Are they bouncing around on a five pounds? Are they holding five pounds? Are they holding 50 pounds? Are they holding 50 pounds and, and falling down? Well, there's weakness in it, okay? And we see that weakness um, on film. We see bending, okay? When the human posture goes from here to here, it has to bend. Bend, bend, it has to get shorter, it has to bend. And when it bends, it twists, it spirals. And we see it as chiropractors. Okay, we see that spinous turn, PRS-SP. We see the atlas turn, we see C2, we measure C2. Other chiropractors measure the pelvis turning. Okay, people that do extremity work, they notice torque, the knee is considering, this isn't firing right, okay? It's all firing right. It's like saying universal intelligence is not doing 100%, okay? So when this thing is weak, okay? I wanna show you this. If I don't hold this here, this is what happens, all right? Hold on, I'll be right back.
Okay, so here's a spine, a little guy. So this is a human being in plastic with no muscles. So if somebody got damaged here, without the muscles on this side trying to pull his head up, this is what we would be doing. Yes? Pretty simple. Okay? So for that to happen, the human body has to lock up somehow and pull itself upright. Okay? It creates muscle asymmetry. It creates tension. And our patients come in and they say, oh, my neck is sore. Oh, that muscle is really sore. They go to a massage therapist. They go, wow, look at that muscle. They go to their trainer and they go, man, you know, this side is weak. This side is strong. This side is built up. This side isn't. Okay. They go to the orthopedist and they say, wow, this shoulder is blown out. I was just shooting baskets though, doc. Okay. So energetically, bends and it twists and it tries to support itself as well as possible. And when the human body gets traumatized and it starts to compensate, it starts compromising its flexibility for its stability. So instead of being flexible and symmetrical and bouncing in those curves, guess what happens? It starts locking up. Muscle tension comes first. I'm carrying a suitcase and the muscles hurt, then the joints break down, we see the degeneration, then organ failure, nervous system failure, as the whole human body compresses in on itself. This is what we work with. Don't belittle that. It's the biggest thing there is. It is the big idea. Yeah, it's a big idea going on right now. You can see it, okay? A lot of people have more faith in a mask they do in the human nervous system. Okay. So as chiropractors, our job is first and foremost is to look at posture of the whole posture. Okay? Look at the whole posture. And we're going to look at those relationships. Okay? And that block that it has, we're going to try to figure out how to unblock it. Okay, because what I do is the human being, when I lay them down, they are in a sympathetic overload to hold that human body upright. Some people are here, and I measure that. We're going to see that. And where they stand, okay, where they stand, and I need to overcome that lock and release that lock. And it will take every bit of effort for you to do that. Because it's three-dimensional in the whole body whole fascial system, the whole muscle system, the whole nervous system is all locked up. And we have to overcome that three dimension, not just in a bone and a piece and, and that kind of stuff is taking it beyond a place to back to motion and to its tensegral volume. And that's my purpose. Okay. So you're going to have to, you got to get your hands dirty. This is, this is not easy. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it, it, it is easy, though, but it's not easy. <laughs> you, you know, it's, you, you have to go through those struggles, okay? So I'm going to help you with those struggles so you can go through them. So you got to get your hands a little dirty. That's what that picture is, all right? You got to get your hands dirty, all right? But on the other side of, of getting into a patient and working that patient and releasing that tensegral volume and understanding it, when you're able to do that to a better place than where you are today, the joy that it gives to you and to the patients is, is uh, the thing that runs my practice. The only thing that runs my practice, the only thing is our work. Okay. Myself, Dr. Ali Friedman, Dr. Sh uh, Ali Friedman, Ali Puro and uh, Sean Puro. Okay. So here's some things that, that I do. Okay. And that is my job is to release that lock. Okay. My second job is to watch it and see if it liked that or it didn't like that. I used to work in, 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 in a chiropractic mindset of it's here and I'm going to move it here. That's not what happens. It's here and I want to figure out the most stable and easiest way to get it here. 
And that may be this way. That may be this way, then that way. Okay. Oh, and there's and and that's the conversation that we'll have. Uh, I don't know if we'll have that today, but we'll have that. That's more of a module three conversation. Okay. Oh. Understanding how to oh. innate intelligence communicates with us. Okay. But it's a it's a watch method. It's about we're gonna have a conversation and we're gonna say, okay, this is what you're gonna start to do at level one. We're going to go and do that, and we're going to see how that body responds on that posture IQ. Okay? And we're, we're, our purpose is, is to try to restore that volume. And there's a concept that we have that is called open, okay, where the human being says it's open, and, and, and we measure that. And that concept is where the rotations come out of the body. And like I said before, when the human body is breaking down because grandma always gets smaller and it bends, it just doesn't bend it bends and twists like a spiral. It creates a three to a spiral, okay? So the bigger the twist, the bigger the collapse. The bigger the collapse, the bigger the weakness. The bigger the weakness, the bigger the trouble. For you and for the patient, okay? It's like a flat tire, okay? Is it really flat? How many holes does it have on it? And how can we support that thing, okay? Because you can't fix it, okay? I said fix before, you can't fix it. Okay, you can support it and you can support it three dimensionally. You teach your patients how to support it, just like you support anything else in your life. You know? So the game is, is not for me to do what I like. It's for me to do what my direct experience has shown me so that with this type of pattern, we're going to look at postural patterns. All right. We're going to learn what it likes. We're going to learn the weaknesses. Look at, if I've got a structural damage this way and I got a compensation this way, which one is weaker? Okay, because if I, if I do this, it goes against my legs. If I do this, it goes against my compensation. Okay, so we need to be able to understand the relationship of structure function and, and understand what the human body is asking us for. And it's, it's simple, it's not, it's not difficult. It's not difficult, it's just so cool. You're, you actually, Watch what the body wants and you have a conversation with it because it tells you right away. The nervous system talks to you right, right away what it likes and what it doesn't like. You know? I smile with the what it doesn't like because it's only through what it doesn't like that you learn, you know? So, so the game is to do what? Try to find the weakness, support it by supporting it last, okay? So that you can stabilize it best. Okay, how do I get this thing to unlock as much as possible that it kind of resets to here in peace and it's got a fighting chance to not fall back down again. And the more I have this thing and understand the path of it's unwind upward, and the faster and easiest way I can get it there to facilitate that by not going against it and using force, okay, and loving on it, guess what? Better work we do, better work I do. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Sounds good, right? Sounds good on phone. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of the overview of uh, Russell Friedman. You, I think you hear me. Okay. And, and again, I really want to reiterate that I'm not here to tell you that I got the answers for you. Um, what I, 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 and this is it. What I do know is that this door is open into to, to Tensegro biomechanics at a global level and watching the human break down, talking about it structurally and energetically through the nervous system and watching how to support it globally. So, so we, we're going to look at it in pieces to start, okay, which is what I do all the time. You know, my brain has to look at it too. I got to look at things in a linear way. So, um, we're going to look at three things on the posture IQ. I'll show you what that looks later, okay, uh, later on today. All right. And we measure weight differential. This is a patient guy. He, he sent me, this is a guy from Texas. He has been to a lot of people. And um, if you look at his picture, you can see, look at, look at, you can look at his x-ray. You can see what's going on. If you look at his posture, I said, please send me a picture. He called me and said, uh, can you help me? I said, well, send me a picture of your posture. Try to wear something tight. And I told him he's the first guy that ever sent me uh, uh, a picture of him in his underwear, you know, or somebody in their underwear. Okay. 
So that's his back, and you can see the guy's in trouble. He he's basically had been bedridden for two 10-day periods with about one to two days in between where he was able to hobble around. Okay. And um, that x-ray that is next to it is an x-ray that we're going to follow all the way through along with another one. Um, that's when I started to build this. He was a new patient. And, and, and look at it, at not at just the x-ray, but also to try to understand it. And to do that, there are three things that we measure on the posture IQ that we look globally. And that is the weight differential. The person is standing right 15 pounds heavier versus the left, okay? Right 15, we'll call that, means heavier on the right. We're also gonna look at the um, configuration. And there are six pieces that we look at, all right? Here they go, I've already mentioned them. We look at the legs, we look at the pelvis, we look at the spine, we look at the shoulders, we look at the neck, and we look at the head. Now, I've already told you that these guys are the postural guys that move posture. And that's important because if you want to move posture, you got to know where to move it. Okay? If you want to steer the car, you can't be in the back seat. Right? You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be controlling the steering wheel. Right? You got you gotta hit that line. Okay, like a puppet. You gotta hit the line. If you don't hit the line, you're not gonna move it. You know, if you move the the, I'm going to move the ear line. You're not going to move the pelvis is that I, all day long. There is no ear line. Okay, I'm just speaking. Just speaking because you're not here. Okay, those are six pieces. There are two pieces that we measure energetically, and that is rotation. We look at the shoulder twist anterior to posterior. So if this measured on the posture IQ 200 millimeters, and this measured 210 millimeters, it would tell me that the left shoulder is 10 millimeters anterior, or the right shoulder is 10 millimeters posterior. And we measure the shoulder and the pelvis in the rotation. Okay? Legs, pelvis, spine, shoulders, neck, head, and how they twist. Boom. Here it is. That's the look. Okay? the look. Fill it in. Off we go. So this is a posture listing. There are some people that are in this class that have done this 50 times. <laughs> I'm killing them right now. <laughs> anyway, this is a posture listing. This is, this is what I do every single person before I could even have a conversation is I need to measure where the body is breaking down. And you know, it's generally nonspecific, okay? And what I measure is what's called, what's short, what's low, what's tilting downward. Why? Because gravity pushes things down. Things don't go up. So if my right shoulder is down, it's not my left shoulder is high, it's my right shoulder is low, okay? That's the shoulder, that's the problem. I need to release this line, the tension here, and overcome this tension here to allow that to release upward. Okay? So this is a conversation right here of, and the way that it's set up is it's set up not with the legs first, okay? Even though we listed it first, okay? And that's a whole nother conversation uh, for another day, all right? But uh, this is a postural listing. Can you see the laser, Brad? Can you see the laser? You see the laser? Yes, a little bit. Great. So this first R tells me that my pelvis is low on the right. And where did I get that information? For me, I get it in three ways. The first one I get is visually looking at the person and putting my hands on them through palpation. Okay. The second one is on the posture IQ. And the third one is through um, an x-ray. Okay. Standing x-ray. Basic standing x-ray in their natural state. That's where I want to know. Why would I change that? Right low hip. This is the spine. This is telling me that the spine is tilting right. And where we look at that 
is the relationship between the VP, it says it there, the VP and L5. So if my VP is to the right of L5, it's a right spine. If it's left, it's a left spine. Okay? Right, left. The next number is the weight differential. This is a weight there. There's a comma here. Dr. Russell? Yes, sir. What if a person has scoliosis? They have two different tilts. Why? What do you mean? You mean an S curve or a C curve? Like an S curve. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, I can tell you the answer is obviously that person's had trauma and multiple trauma that has produced that kind of curve and that type of compensation. Okay. My, my general question is not to ask why. It's to evaluate it here because I know everything has been traumatized. Everything's been neurologically compensating. It's in gravity. Boom. And what happens if it's had a trauma to the head again? Okay. I, I can make up a million scenarios of how that could happen. But they, again, they don't serve me on the path to support it. My path is to evaluate it and then to release it and watch the way that it responds and try to stabilize and find that path of how to get out of that maze as fast as possible. I tell my patients, if you had a nail that's bent in a piece of wood, what's the best way? I can tell you every which way of it, okay? But, the, and, uh, but I can't tell you why it's happened except trauma, compensation. My goal is to try to understand how to stabilize it and get it out of there, okay? All right, so, wait. This tells me that this person has three more pounds on the right than they do on the left, okay? Now, the top number here, the first number is the shoulder. The second one is the pelvis. So we're kind of working our way down. Okay. So we had here is the weight. And on the weighted side, the right shoulder is posterior too. So we list the shoulder and the pelvis on the weighted side. So I've got a right low hip, a right spine, okay, three pounds to the right and my shoulder and pelvis are back two millimeters. Then what happens is my shoulder on the left tilts down low on the left, my neck goes left, and my head goes left. So right pelvis, right spine, I'm gonna exaggerate it so you can see it, okay? Left shoulder, neck and head, bringing it up top, twisting two backwards on the weighted side. Shoulder, pelvis, P2, P2. Got it? It's from that that I am able to do that, what I just did, or visualize it in my head. And that's the first step of having a conversation that we're going to have over the next five hours. Okay? So that's a postural listing. Um, if you have digital scales, you use digital scales in your eyeballs and you do the best you can. If you got an x ray, you, you do that and you got your hands. If you got an x ray and you got your hands and your eyeballs and you got a posture IQ, you know, you win, 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 okay? So it's all the way around. Okay, so the postural listing is the first step, all right? And we wanna measure, like I said, what's short, all right? So I have listed here a, um, it says right heavy 12, it says left heavy 40. This gives me my shoulder rotation, my hip rotation, one's on the, sh on the right side, the other one's on the left side. I told you it's only on the weighted side that we record it. You got to do a little flip in here. Okay. You're going to look at this picture and tell me what you got. All right. You got a minute. Write a postural listing. Oh, yeah, I see it. 
Yes, sir. You want to mention that they're only going to write weight and rotation? Only three because components. You're going to use the picture for the rest of it, Brad. Okay. All right. Thanks. Use the picture for what you see. Okay. Yes. Okay. The numbers that you can have from a posture IQ. Okay. Thanks. Got it, buddy. All right, we're going to have to hustle here because we're going to be really behind schedule. Okay, so, you're, so you've got a, uh, what, what does it look like? A right low hip, is it? Okay, fair enough. I think it is. I can't tell. I got a right low hip. I have a right spine. You can see that. I have right weight of 12. It's written in superscript. And on the right side, my right shoulder is anterior three. And it says left hip though is anterior eight. I only want to list it on my weighted side. Okay. So if it's anterior eight, it must be posterior eight. All right. And then the shoulder, neck, and head, I believe, are all lefts. Correct? All lefts. Okay, the second one is a left low hip, the left spine, with left weight, left 40. Okay, it's got a, what do you guys have in the shoulder? It's hard for me to see. Uh, right. Ah, my bad on the, I made a lot of, I made some errors here. Sorry guys. I can't see the picture well, my bad. Right. is a right, right, left. Sorry. This is a right low shoulder, right neck with a left head tilt. Sorry about that. It's hard for me to see on the wall. And the second one is definitely a left low hip, left spine, left 40 pounds. I gave you that information. You want to list it on the left side, the shoulder. So that is, it says anterior nine on the right shoulder, so that must be posterior nine. And it says the left hip is posterior 10. So this is posterior nine, posterior 10. And then what is the shoulder doing? Right. And then what's the neck? Yoshi? Right. And where's the head? Right. Okay. Fair enough. That would be the posture listed hey. here. Sorry about that. Hey, Russell, quick question. On the first one, on the first one for the pelvic, yes. uh, for the hip, it, doesn't it say zero on the film as if there's it's, it's a straight line? Yes, maybe it does. Okay, but that's just the film, you know. Okay, <laughs> all I, right. I, 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 just making sure. <laughs> no, I got, I got you. I got you. I got okay. you. I got you. I got you. We're gonna go through a lot of these. So, all right, so let's move on. So you can look at this and we're going to start having a conversation on what these letters mean, because this one says rights and two rights and a left. And this one's got lefts over here. This one's got counter rotation. This one doesn't. These are nines and tens and 40. This is 12s and three and eight. This head doesn't match up over here. What's going on? So we want to know that stuff. Okay. Cause we want to be postural experts. Okay. So. You've got one minute to uh, blast out. Oh, sorry about that. Can you, I'm going to, uh, you don't have that slide. Your next slide, I'm going to have you fill in those letters and numbers. Let's do the first two only. Each of you, the first two on this slide. 
Go ahead. So we started a half hour late, so hey, we're Russell? also a half hour late. Who's the first two? Russell? Yes. Uh, it's really blurry. It's hard to see the see, see the see the information on that slide. Right. That's why you were supposed to print this. Yeah, I'm just making sure. I sent out at least five times. It was perfect. I sent it to a printer. He did it in high resolution. Perfect. So that's the best I can do you for you, unless you're looking on your laptop at the at the at the or on your phone or something, if you pull it out of Dropbox, Andy, you'll see it clear as a bell. Hey, Russell, I don't have this slide, I don't think. I have. I just had one of those slides on my on my printout. What are you talking about? The last slide that you did, is this the same exact slide that you did a second ago? Yes. Oh, okay. I haven't done, I, I, the problem is I have the answers on the next slide that I want you to fill out and I don't want to show it to you, so. Got me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I got a right low hip, so it's an R. I got a right spine, it's an R. I got right thirty pounds, R R comma R thirty. Okay, the shoulder is low on the left. Okay, so I've got a low left shoulder left neck tilt and a left. So I have three R's and two lefts. Then it tells me my rotation. I have right anterior rotation. Is, is that, yes, that's good. I want it on the right because that's where the weight is. So I write down anterior six and I also have the pelvis anterior four. So I end up with an RR, R30, A6, A4, comma, LLL. And really, if you just look at that, you could say that this person is going right low hip, right spine, right 30 pounds, the shoulder turns back, left, 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 the shoulder goes forward six, the pelvis goes low four. That's what that person looks like, okay? And that's important. We have to be able to evaluate it if we want to help them globally, okay? The second one, has a right low pelvis, but it has a left spine. Okay, so that's written right, left. And then comma, right 30, right, my right 30 with 30 is a superscript. I've got a left low shoulder, so it's left low shoulder, left neck, left tilt. So my three letters are R, R, R L, R, 30. And on the other side, is my shoulders, neck, and head, left, left, left. And in the middle, I've got right 30 pounds, and I got an anterior six and an anterior four. This is listed on the left side, this is listed, listed on the right side. So it's not left posterior that I put down, I put down right anterior. So my final listing is right, right, right left, comma, right 30, A6, A4, comma, left, left, left. That's different than the other one, isn't it? Okay. How is it different? Because the spine here is not as the same as this one. This one had, the first one has a right, right. The second one has a right, left. Now, if you're able to stand up, you should just go ahead and feel that. Just allow your hip to drop off and let your spine come with it. That's the first one. The second one, Push your shoulders over laterally and push your fixed point over sideways, not bending it, just pushing it over and tell me if that feels better than the first one. Which one feels easier on the body? Number one or number two? First one. First one. First one, right? Okay, beautiful. Okay. So when you see this, I'm, I'm, you know, I go all over the board, but when I see this, I know that person's got L5 pain, localized L5 pain, because that is not a normal biomechanics 
uh, integration there. And again, try to give stuff to all levels on this class, okay? But right away, I see there's a, there's an integration problem there. And how do you know that? Because I just told you, and that's on normal mechanics. We're going to get to that. So there's other ones for you to practice, okay? You got to learn how to write a perfect postural listing as best as you can. I don't mean, the first way I mean that is to write it. The second one is to create accuracy, meaning it's correct, okay? You know, precision, repeatability, and accuracy, okay, is whether it's uh, accurate. <laughs> so um, these numbers are important. You want to put your hands on people. You want to touch people. You want to feel where they are. You want to look at them in the front. You want to look at them at the back. You want to gather the data that you can gather. And I'll tell you something that's very interesting if you, when you start watching people, is human beings are not like this bottle of water. It just sits on the table and doesn't move. Human beings have to move. So they can't just lock. Okay, so what I notice on the posture IQ is that human beings sway. Okay, they sway. Say you miss a line like this, they sway. And you can watch the weight get a little bigger, a little smaller. Bigger, a little smaller. You can watch the rotations get a little bigger, a little smaller. Okay, and that, that concept is called persistence. And it's interesting, and I was wondering, why does that happen? And I realized that if the human body was to lock up the whole time, the muscles would just explode and energetically we, could, we would just overload. It. So what it does, it's so cool, because you can watch it, is that it relaxes, the body starts to fall out, and then it kicks and it brings itself up. And it kicks and it brings itself up, not to zero, but to some persistence. So say on, on any of these, instead of right 30 would be its say middle point, it would go right 37 and then kick to like right 22. It would do this and it would live in this 30 zone median point. Okay, and it does that so that the human body can move and it can conserve energy. It's cool to watch. And when people get adjusted, and they're released and they're more in a three-dimensional stable position to see the volume lifted and they're opened and those rotations come out, guess what happens? You watch that persistence is really small because the human body is not expending any energy. It just stays right in the middle there. It's cool. So how do we know what we're looking at when we're measuring initially and they're moving all, I see that all the time. Their, their, their weight's gonna shift on the posture IQ. So, so, so Brad, um, you're going to be consistent with what you do. Okay, when I use the lasers, I use them in the same place all the time. And the shoulders, I put them in the same place every time. I don't use here, then there, okay? On the weight, I kind of watch where it keeps stabilizing in between, where they try to fall in between, and it kicks and it falls off. It's easy. I, Brad, if somebody is 30 pounds, and then they go to 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 or 1 or 2 on the other side, you don't care if it was 30 or 32 or 35, right? Right. So, you know, I have this medical doctor, he came in the other day and he says, if I got in you know, I'm here three times, would, um, would uh, I get the same reading? I said, you would get the same pattern and you would live in some of this persistent zone that I talked about. One time it may be 12, another time he may get on, it's 15. And if I let him stand there, he would weaken, weaken, weaken further and you watch people fall out and then they really get in trouble, they have to get off. Okay? Yes, thank you. Move on. Okay, so this is now we're going to start some fun. What, what did we really talk about so far? We talked about that the human body is tensegral. It's got six parts. It's got a stable line. It's got a, a, a bouncing line. And it's nicest when it stands on center and it gets some damage. And the postural muscles or the shoulders upward and the neck and head are also part of that writing reflex, but they don't affect our posture. And now we just measured it and we saw some weight differentials and some twisting and turning and this kind of stuff. Now we want to talk about what's normal when that happens. Okay, see there's normal textbook and then there's normal trauma. Okay? I mean, that's what we want to strive for is a sustainable place. Okay? Person standing on one leg uh, carrying a 50 pound suitcase is not a sustainable place. Okay? So there are two normal patterns that I notice, okay? And that is,
So I wrote them upside down. The reason I did that is uh, because this one is the most common. Okay. So what these patterns represent, I don't have any weight in here and I don't have any rotations. I'm talking about configuration of a pattern. Remember I told you there's three things that I look at. I look at weight differential, I look at the configuration, and I look at the energetic status of how the person is holding that up. 50 pound suitcase up, 50 pound suitcase down. What's the configuration and how far off center it is, okay? This first pattern is saying, you see me, Yoshi? Yes. Is saying that I have a left low hip, a left spine, a left shoulder, a left neck and head. And watch my pelvis. Right weight. And it does this. That's what happens. This is that trauma. Boom. This is a person that has trauma from the pelvis downward. Pattern one. Pattern two, excuse me. I don't talk about his pattern one and two. I'm just using those numbers. Okay. This pattern. Well, we got most of that. You yeah. can say that if you want. I mean, I, it's not usually, I mean, I talk to myself, not to, not to you. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's this pattern. Okay. This is the most common pattern there is. And it can go the other way where everything is over to the right, except the weight. Okay. So what has happened is in this pattern, this person has been hit in the pelvis or the legs, trauma, boom, it gets knocked off center. And what happens here? This motion. Compensate. Bring the head up on top. I don't just sit. This pocket. Here. There's been damage at the legs and the pelvis, it's not, and it does this motion, cantilever, boom. Instead of this, it brings the pelvis, shoulder, and tips it over. Great balance. The second one is different. It has a left low hip and a left spine, but it's got left weight, and it's through the spine that the shoulders, neck, and head come upward. So the first one is this, it's got all the same lefts, but the weight is on the right. And this pattern is all lefts with the top going right. Okay? These are normal patterns. You need to write that down. Boom, left, left, right, left, left, left. You can do it the opposite way, where you have all rights with left weight. Left weight, all right. These are the same pattern, only opposite ways. Boom, boom. This one, this is the other one, to the right side. So these guys are all rights, these guys are all lefts. And then the body compensates above. So this person in that first pattern has had a damage from high pelvis or upward, and then the shoulders, neck, and head can turn back. This, is, this one is not as common. So pattern one, this one, the trauma is pelvis upward. Trauma of pattern two is low pelvis and legs. Right around the femur joint, that's that pivot point, which is part of the pelvis. So it's, they both can include the pelvis, but one of them's high and low. Okay, I like to think of this one as legs and this one as pelvis. What's the compensation in the first one? Compensation in this one is everything above. Okay, so you got you got the you got the you got the pelvis and the spine over on that left side and then you got the shoulders, neck and head. So shoulders, neck and head compensate in number one. And the pelvis upward compensate in number two. They 
Look to create a V motion, depending on where it is. And it depends what's moving. If the legs are moving out, or the legs are moving out and bringing the pelvis with it, and then the compensation. Okay? If you're hearing this for the first time, jam you up a little bit. Take a breath. Nice and easy. Okay, any questions? Remember, this is a first touch for a lot of people. Can you move over to the opposite side so we can see the poster board and write that down? Get my pet, get my head out of the way. Yes, thank you. Russell, can you talk one more time about the uh, pattern one and two compensation? Say that again. Talk about the compensation. Yeah, the pattern one and two compensation. So, so we're looking at, at this, this this kind of motion and where it happens in in the in the first one pelvis goes with the weight okay so there's some damage at the pelvis boom all right and the pelvis falls over it brings the legs with it which to me the legs are the weight usually okay and for you dennis so like in this one here i go left pelvis left weight and then i have my spine starting to turn back the, the fp still stays on the left side but the shoulder tips low on the right and I get three rides. So the compensation is, is shoulders upward and probably half, and obviously half the spine. Okay, it's as it's doing this work. Okay, that's not what's happening in the other one. Okay, in this one, in this one, it's getting hit. Okay, so watch as I get hit at the leg here. Can you see me? As I get hit at this leg here, boom. This thing has to create balance through here, and my pelvis drops. Okay, look, it's very simple. Whatever structure is damaged, there's a compensation right above it. Okay, and if I've got weight on the if I got weight on the left side here or on the right side, and it's not with the pelvis, okay, then there's your separation. This one here is a leg trauma with a pelvic compensation. Look at the difference of the numbers, the letters, right? You see that, okay? It's very simple. So, I mean, if I had a, sh a shoulder on the right, okay, that was damaged, what would my neck do? Compensate, it has to. So the compensation is always above, that's the writing reflex. So, so if you see weight and you think legs, where's, where's the damage, okay? This is damaged legs. This is damaged pelvis and upward. Look, they're all the same. Okay, this one here, where is the separation? These are all left. So you've got left pelvis, left spine, left weight. They go together. There's no separation there. So the trauma can't be there. I mean, the, the, the separation, the compensation can't be there. There's no separation, right? To see a, a, a compensation, you have to see something turning backwards. That's the whole purpose of it. Okay, so where do you see the separation here? Here, shoulders. This is compensation. This is trauma stuff. Okay, this is trauma stuff. This is compensation. This is trauma. This is trauma. These are compensation. Legs, first floor damage. Second, third, or fourth floor damage, so to speak. How's that? Because the compensators are above. That's a great question, and I hope I think that maybe cleared up some stuff. Did that help? Can you, can you lie to me and say yes? <laughs> you said you see the weight, you see the legs. Is that what you yes. said? Yes. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, here we go. Okay. So there are normal numbers. Okay. So we just talked about configuration. Okay. This is what I just gave you was the normal configuration. Okay, now I'm going to give you normal numbers. The configuration was this. Remember, we're going to talk about three things. The configuration, how the building bends and tw uh, how it zigzags. Okay, all right. I got six floors. They're zigzagging. All right. Now we're going to see how much they're zigzagging. Well, this one's three pounds off, but this one's 30 pounds off. Okay.
okay? And we're gonna also look at the second component, which is the energetics, which is the rotation, okay? Okay, normal weight differential. Zero to three pounds. Okay, so somebody that's 30 pounds off is 27 pounds off normal. Okay, now that being said, okay, that's the way I started this. If you put somebody that's 200 pounds on or 100 pounds off, three pounds is different, okay? But I'm telling you, most people could get to zero to three pounds, all right? That's all I could tell you, okay? If I've got a person, a big guy, and he weighs 250 pounds, and he's 40 pounds off, and he goes to five pounds, I'm going to be happy, okay? I'm just giving you some, some reality of the situation. But zero to three pounds is normal. Somebody that lives in some configuration at zero to three pounds is a normal weight differential side to side, okay? Normal rotation is zero to three millimeters. So if my shoulder is zero, remember that one that was two and two? It's in normal, it's just twisted a little bit, okay? Listen, you never can make it as good as the manufacturer. That's one of my rules. You catch my drift. Okay, so zero to three pounds, zero to three millimeters, and the shoulders and pelvis must be coplanar, which means they must move together, okay? If they don't move together, it's, a, it's, a, it's not happy. Okay. It is not happy. Zero to three pounds, zero to three millimeters, and coplanar. All right? Go ahead and stand up and twist your pelvic back, your pelvis back on one side, and then swing your shoulders forward on the same side and see how that feels. And you'll see that that ain't okay. I tell my patients that's no bueno. Okay. So when you have a normal pattern, one of those, with normal weight differential and normal rotations and coplanar, I call that sustainable. That is a place where people are sustainable. It's like textbook trauma position. Okay? Sustainable. Okay. So, hang in there. A little bit to go here. Let me see where we are. I think I got about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six slides, guys. Here we go. This is important. So we're gonna we're gonna, but this is easy stuff, okay? So what we're gonna look at now is we 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 have defined a postural listing. We define we have defined um, some uh, normals, all right, in the configuration. Okay, in the weight and in the twist and counter twist. Right now, what we want to do is we want to start understanding which segment is is creating a problem. Because if I know what normal is now, now I can look at a postural listing like I did with that that one with the left. Okay, with the left spine. And I said, hey, that's not normal. Okay, let's just go back to that for a second. Yeah, this one right here. It says right, left, right. See, here's a normal pattern. It's a normal pattern, but it's not sustainable. It's got 30 pounds off and the twist is six and four. Okay? By the way, when it's a 10 to twist, we call that collapsed. Okay? At twist of 10 or more, the person's on a flat topic. They're so twisting down, it's like a screw going around 10 times. It's flush with the wood. Okay, and you can see in this one here, well, this one's a normal pattern, but that's not a normal pattern. And when there's not a normal pattern, there's a stress there. And that place where the body goes right, left, is what I call a wedge. Okay? Right? And that is an area of dysfunction. Okay? It's a non-integrated... Guys, I'm going to ask you to put your mute on. Red microphone, make it red. Thank you. Go 
that's it. All right, guys. And that is Josh Scheidler and Jung Hee Lee. Calling you out. I'm calling you out if you got your mic on. Dennis Brickner. Okay. There it is. 19. That person. Muted yourself, Russell. Ah, I muted myself. That'd be the maybe the best class ever. Okay. So, so a dysfunction is a place where something is not integrated. All right, and it's a deviation off a normal pattern. So, patient one, where is the dysfunction, guys? Okay, how do we do this? Look at the normal and look at what's not normal. So let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna let you just look at it for a second and then we'll uh, we'll talk about it. So here's two patterns, right, right, right 12, anterior, posterior, whatever the numbers are, left, 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 and right, right, right. So where is where is the dysfunction here? What does this represent? Which pattern does this probably represent? The easiest way to do this is if the weight is on the same side as the pelvis, okay, it's gonna be pattern one. If the, if the weight and the pelvis are opposites, then it's more like pattern two. See this one over here? This, the weight and the pelvis are on the same side, pattern one. This, the weight and the pelvis are on opposite side. So which one is this more like? Talk to me. Talk to me. Pattern one. Number one. The weight and the pelvis are on the same side. Okay? So if the weight and the pelvis, let's just look over here, I should have three rights and three lefts. I got three light rights and five rights and a left. So what's, where's the problem here? What's not working right? Neck and head. The shoulder and the neck should be left. So the shoulder and neck are dysfunctioning. No? Yes? I'm having difficulties, I think. Three rights, two yes. lefts. That would be a normal pattern right here. Pattern one, the weight and the pelvis are on the same side. Okay, this one over here, where's the dysfunction? It's an interesting conversation about this one. It's a normal pattern, but it's 40 pounds off. Okay, just looking at the picture, what do you think the dysfunction is? Here and here, no? Look at that. You see how this is recovering? See, this is recovering, but here's the trouble right through here, man. And that and that would make sense because it's the transition above the pelvis, pelvis and spine, okay, so, and shoulder. It's somewhere between the spine and the shoulder. Spine and the shoulder. Here's the spine, spine, and the shoulder. Somewhere between the spine and the shoulder, there's a dysfunction going on because that's the place where we see a trauma and we see a compensation, okay? Okay, so where we see those stressors, okay, and where those dysfunctions are, all right, what do we see? We call those wedges, where something goes right and left. Okay, the dysfunction is the piece that's not working right. The wedge is where the stress is, it's where the V is. A right hip. There's a left spine. My dysfunction is right there. 
There is no pattern that has the spine and the pelvis where they counter counterbalance each other. None. Okay. So this is the dysfunction. This is the wedge between the pelvis and the spine. That's where the trouble is. There's damage there. And you need to know that. Otherwise, you can't help them. Okay, because if you're just messing around with the pelvis and you're not, or you're messing around with the head, and you're trying to see the balances there, you got to get this thing to lift up and out. And you got to get it to a normal pattern that's sustainable. And to do that, you have to start understanding what's not working. And I know it's tough at first. Okay, hang in there. The first time, I remember the first time somebody started talking to me about upper cervical work. It was difficult. Okay? Give yourself some time, it's normal. Okay, but if there's certain things that I'm saying and I'm making some jive and sense, hold on to those. Okay, we're gonna be done in just a few minutes. Okay, so where are the wedges in these two listings? Just look where they separate. Okay, so the wedge for this one is where is the right left interchange? Where's the counterbalance between the neck and the head? Neck and head, patient one. Where is it on the second one? Well, my pelvis is on the left. My spine's on the left. My weight's on the left. So my legs, my pelvis, and my spine are on the left. My shoulders go right. There's my deviation. So where is my, where is my wedge? Somewhere between the spine and the shoulders. Spine and shoulders. And you'll see these points, and it's important because you'll start seeing people that have trouble with these places, and you start having a conversation with them because those are the bend points in the body that are, that are trying to create this, this structural to comp compensatory balance by the nervous system. Okay? Okay. There you go. All right, let's do the first two. Russ? Yes. You said for patient one, um, the neck and the head, correct, is where the wedge is? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks, brother. You got it. So happy to see you on, Armin. Love you, brother. Thank you. Okay, so let's do the first two. I'll give you a minute. And you will almost survive module one. conversation to yourself or to a patient becomes this, okay? I've evaluated your posture, okay? There are six components to it that get knocked off center when we look at the weight. We look at the configuration of the six stories, are they zigzagging, okay? How far it's tilting, how far it's zigzagging. And we also look at how much it's falling down. And obviously the falling down is the bigger problem because buildings can tilt, buildings can, can you know, bend, but it's the fall down that becomes the imminent problem. And that is the last thing that happens, okay? So you start having a conversation, then, well, this is your postural listing to the person. This is your postural listing. Let's do number two. And I say, you know, these two letters right here, your hip and your spine, Normally, just like uh, the front of your car and the back of the car, they should go together. Yours don't. So your spine has been damaged. Your pelvis goes right. Your spine has been damaged to the left. 
that's the dysfunction. The place that you feel the trouble and why you feel the trouble is because that joint is feeling this way. And that's the witch. And I don't have to say that to them, but that's what they see. Okay, and that's the conversation I want you to hear is here is a postural listing, here is a dysfunction, okay, and this is the stress that you now have. And you can linear have a conversation that's beyond, well, oh, so you have right sciatica, okay, great, and you're getting headaches, and how often do you do that, and what do you take? I don't talk about that. Where's the, tr I don't even ask them where their trouble is until I see the trouble, okay, because my job is to, you know, not for them to tell me, is to be able to look at this and see how real I can be. The coolest thing ever. I just, I could tell them where they're having trouble. Of course you do it. If you saw somebody's wheel falling off, you wouldn't tell them that the battery wasn't working. <laughs> it's so simple. It's so far beyond the conversation that, that you thought an hour ago. It's actually looking at somebody's posture and their configuration, their weight, and, that, and their twist and saying, okay, these are some not normal things. And you have that at some level. And then to be able to say, okay, this thing is, here are normal patterns, here are not normal patterns, and once I know what's normal, then I can look at this and I can see the trouble. And not only that, it's three pounds is normal and you're standing all the way out here, okay? I mean, how do you get a left spine and all this stuff left in number two? Okay, I mean, look at that. I mean, think about that, all right? Think about, let's talk about number two. I don't care about anything else, okay? Can you guys see me? Okay? Yes, we can see you. Okay. So if number two, I mean, it, there's some reality of these numbers. There's a configuration, there's a weight, and there's a twist. And this person has a right low hip. They have a left spine, a left shoulder, a left neck, and a left head. Is that enough to compensate for that right pelvis? It's 30 pounds to the right. If it was enough, it would be zero to three. So if it's 30 pounds and, and all this stuff above is the left, this pelvis has got to be all the way out here with those legs. You got me? You see, this would be three pounds, guys. This is 30. You see the issue? Yeah. Yes. Then you put a twist on top of that, and you can tell the energetics of the human body of that patient sitting in front of you. That's what I do every single patient. <clears throat> and then the next step is how to lay him down and, and figure out how to change that. How are we gonna change that? What do we wanna change it to? To its normal pattern. What would be the normal pattern for this? It's to get that left spine to become right. And then I would have pattern one, three rights and three lefts. Then I want to get the weight to go to zero to three. And I want to get the rotations to go to zero to three and coplanar. And I want to figure out how to do that. So this is this pattern. Okay? The dysfunction is the spine, and the wedge is the spine and the pelvis. Bingo. Mountain of information for you, the patient, and what your purpose is. I mean, just think of that. Look at that. This whole upper part of the body is doing everything that it can, and it's failing out to the right 30 pounds still. It's not here. It's not three. It's not zero. It's not this. It's this. Okay? What happens if you counter-twisted that thing? What happens if you put that head right or that neck right? Guess what? Now you understand there's more complications. It's not about the head. It's not about the neck. It's not about the pelvis. It's about the whole relationship to all this. And that's what this conversation today is the beginning of. Is that this thing is in distress, it has a nervous system, and it's breaking down. And there's some normalcies and there's not normalcies. And then there is tensegral volume. And how do we help the person lift up from a structure function point of view? Is a global conversation called QSM3. Okay. So the next piece is to understand this concept that for that there is in that configuration and in that twist there are places where the body is in tension 
or it's in compression. Okay? So, in the patient that had, go back to that other guy, I like that guy. This guy right here. That's this here. Which side is in compression? Which side is in compression, guys? Left. Thank you. Is anybody, which side then is in tension? Right. Thank you. Love you. Okay. Patient one, patient two. Okay. Which side is in tension in patient one? You got, this is what you have. Left. You have five rights at 12 pounds and a left. Which side is in tension? Side, left side. Left side is in tension, right? Okay, that's that's true. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. Well, actually, let's just do it now. There's there's two tensions, aren't there? So this person has a right pelvis. We're looking at it from the back. Right spine. Right shoulder. Right neck. And a left head. Okay. This whole side from the neck down is in what? What is this in? Compression. Short. It's in compression. It's all right. You got a right pelvis, a right spine, a right shoulder, and a right neck, right? You got five rights. Where is the short whole side and where is it up to? Short all the way up to between the neck and the head, right? Right at about C1. Okay. This side is in compression here. This side up to that point is in tension. Yes? But which side is short here? And which side is long here? Short, long, tension, compression. This side is in tension here. And this side is in compression here between the neck and head. Yes? look at you guys and see if you're just giving me the finger or you're loving me or you're hating me. I can't tell. It's clear. Huh? How are we doing? Do you get that? Yeah, it's very clear. Thank you. Okay, who doesn't? Does, okay. So when things are short, you look at the short places. Just look at the picture. Okay? Look at the picture. Right pelvis, right spine, right weight, right shoulder, right neck. And the head comes back. So from here, it's all right. Remember, we record what's low, okay? We record what's short, what's closest to gravity. So when you have five rights, that right side is in compression. That, but, and, the, and uh, the opposite side has to be that intention. But, but that's not the way it is for the head and neck, okay? The head and neck are just the opposite. And, and if you're a chiropractor, that's why you see these diagonal pain patterns. Okay, you see these diagonal pain patterns because you see this, this right here is the tension line. It's trying to hold the whole body up. This is the compression line. That's some good stuff. <laughs> okay, so what's the issue, man? Okay. Patient, I just, so Sylvie's in. Wherever it's short, it's in compression. And then when it transitions to where it's long, that's in tension. Okay, and most people have something like this. You didn't need to know all this right now. You just need to kind of get the taste of it. Okay? You look at posture, you see what's normal, you see how it's not normal, you see the, the numbers, you start putting it together, and you see then where the dysfunctions are, you see where the wedge points are, which is the stress, and then you start, the next step is where's the person collapsing, and then where are they holding, and why is that important? Because right side sciatica on this person 
would be different than left side sciatica, would it not? Okay. Because compression is more like DEFCON 2 and 3, meaning bigger problem. You know, I tell my patients, if you're carrying a suitcase, all right, it gets heavy before you have joint disease, the muscles start getting tired. So tension are places where the body is trying to hold itself upright. Okay. So in this first one, everything is leaning to the right. All the postural muscles, shoulders down. What side is trying to hold that person up at, at, thir at 30 pounds? The left side is trying to hold it up. Is it doing a good job? It's doing a good job. It's doing the best it can do, but it's not doing what it needs to do. It needs to be three pounds. So the left side is in tension, which is a muscle problem. So if somebody came into me and said, man, Dr. Friedman, I got this horrible left QL pain. I said, well, you know, you're lucky because that's just your body telling you in a muscular way that it's having trouble. But if it was over here on the compressed side, okay, on the compressed side, I'd go, that's a bigger issue. You got some joint compression, nerve compression. It's further on down the path of degeneration. These are the steps that we make to see global tensequel posture. Okay? And I want to tell you, if you printed this thing or you have it on your computer, if you didn't print it, you missed out. Because you should be writing stuff all over the place on that book. Seriously. Dr. Yoshi came in, he's sitting next to me, he didn't print it. I mean, <laughs> okay, so yeah, so, and we know Andy didn't do it, so now we know two people at least, okay? I didn't print it either, by the way, it's three. All right, so, um, the interesting thing is, look at that picture, look at those x-rays, look at this, look at this muscle buildup over here compared to that side. You can see that on your computer, it's night and day. Okay, night and day. You can see it as well on the second picture. You can see it going all the way up into the ear. Look at that, that first patient all along, even their jawline, all through here. The muscle is this big compared to this side, it's nothing here. Look at this thing. All this jaw pain and this muscular stress. Look at this, look how big this muscle is. This one doesn't even exist. Why is that? Because it didn't happen yesterday. Okay, because this person is holding itself up and the fascial system is doing it and it's attaching at the bony system and everybody's noticing it in every healthcare field as the human body just breaks down. And we are the first people that say, hey, this is normal. This is a dysfunction. This is where the wedge and the stress is, okay? This is where it's in tension and compression. Hey, this is a fascial muscular issue. Hey, this is a joint and nerve issue kind of mentality. Okay, tension, compression. Okay, and that's what happens. Okay, so patient one came in with bilateral PSIS pain. Okay, and uh, I think it was, I don't remember who it was, brought it up, but they said, man, that pelvis is kind of level. But if you look just above that, there's a big bend in there. Now, how do you get a bend into something straight? Watch this. Boom. See that? Pelvis square. This is what this first picture looks like. Pelvis is kind of square, and the body goes boom, right into that like that. It's not bending. They should be moving together. Okay? When you see something straight and something not straight, that's not cool. Okay? And this big bend right here, okay, and that's what that arrow is. That's where that trauma is and that dysfunction. And this person just feels that whole compressive stress inside it. Okay, look how the head bends back and the neck bends back. If the head's bending back that much, it's got to be doing that for a reason. It's Listen, innate intelligence never makes a mistake. Okay, and if that head is bending back, could you see how far that head is bending back to the left? You see the musculature build up from it. As the body is trying, you see it from a posture IQ as everything's off to the right and it's bending back left, all right? And now it's doing this, squash down, all right? This person needs to be released upward, okay? What about this person? She's got right gluteal pain, right QL pain, right knee pain. He's been to the emergency room twice in the past two weeks for not being able to walk. Can't get up. 
What's the first thing that I told them? He's got left pelvis, left spine, left 40, he's got big rotations. Okay, what I tell them about that right side pain? Good problem, bad problem. He's lucky to have it. Tension or compression? Right side is in tension. Tension. No kidding. Look at left 40. Listen, this is left 40 with no nothing holding this thing up. In tension. <laughs> and it's still left 40. <laughs> right? This guy's pulling up, but this is what he's doing. Full side. He's doing everything it can to hold him up. Look at the pelvic twist in that thing. It's at a 10. When I tell you about 10, it's collapsed. Look at the twist. It's totally dysfunctional. The whole thing is all out of bent and twisted. And I mean, just go stick about, you know, 10 babes of concrete on top of this guy's head. And that's what happens. What do you got to do to it? And if you look at this picture, guys, which bone is out of place? Every single one of them. Which one's the cause? I got no clue. Because the bone ain't doing, it's not carrying anything. It doesn't do anything. It's the support. I got to release the balloon. And I'm going to release that on the bony pathway as a chiropractor. So this was a gift right here to that guy. Okay. First two. Let's just do the second one. Go ahead. Look at this thing and just kind of figure out what kind of pain the person would have. Where's the tension on this side? Where's the compression on this side? Is that better? Can you see that? Brad, do you see the picture better like that? That's better. How about you on your on your flip chart? I'm here. Yeah, you can see that fine. So let's just do number two. Number two, their chief complaint was L5 S1 joint pain. Can you see why that's happening? Guys, look at the pattern. Look at the listing. It deviates from the first pattern. That's where the stress is. That's where the wedge is. That's where the dysfunction is. Okay? That's why it hurts. Okay? So he drops off right and everything's turning to the left. All right? The whole left side from, pelt, from, from head downward is short. Okay? The whole left side is short. The whole right side is in tension because it's doing this. Tension all the way up all the way down. No bends. There's no other wedges. There's only one wedge. Okay. Questions? Hallelujah. Okay. So I just want one minute of your time. I hope you come back. <laughs> um, so so I've, I've said this a few times is uh, um, I'm starting a language that uh, we can actually communicate how the human body is breaking down in a gravitational field based on its trauma and its compensation. And, and you guys are the pioneers to be able to step forward in a tensegral model and start understanding how the human is not just what we see, but you know what is uh, what we see further. You know, as far as normal and not normal, and then we're going to figure out the how. And the how is how do we help that? Okay, and that's, that's what really what tomorrow does. Okay, today's more of the what and what do we see in a bigger way. Okay, so I'm going to open it up if you have uh, some questions. And then uh, we're going to start back in uh, 35 minutes. Sorry about that, but the next, next time it will go a little faster. And this is a first go, guys, so I'm doing the best that I can and trying to help you as much as I can. All right. So I apologize for being me? this late. What's that? Can you hear me? It's Lazar. Yes, sir. Cool. Hey, thank you for pivoting, man. When everybody else is saying we can't meet in person uh, or you have to move one bone or uh, 
there's only one right way to do it. You're, uh, you're pivoting and, and, uh, thank you for doing this online, man. It's never been done. And, uh, so thanks for doing it, man. You're bringing it to us and we can't be there, but we're, we're, uh, learning. So thanks for doing it, man. You're doing awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, buddy. All right. Any questions? Okay. So, um, Let's do this. I'm going to log on in um, 35 minutes and you guys log in on uh, just a few minutes after the half hour. You all know how to get on. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions and if you get a moment, maybe you can take a peek at some of the stuff that's just coming up and what we're going to talk about. We're going to start talking about some tensegral biomechanics. And at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about the release. Um, and, and again, just, just 30 more seconds is, it's, it's with this stuff. It's, it's, you're not here. I, I, I need to give you the, the, the biomechanics stuff, okay? But uh, at the same time, I want to show you a little bit of the release. But feeling this is the game. Feeling this and, and experiencing it um, is the game. And we do classes, and, and you know, this, this whole COVID thing is, uh, it doesn't mess anything up. It's exactly what needs to happen, of course. But, but being and watching and touching it is, is really a great experience, and I look forward to taking that to the next level for you. Okay, signing off. Peace and love.